In this lecture, we are going to talk about the measurement of plasma volume and interstitial fluid volume. And we are going to measure these volumes with the help of indicator dilution method. Now, we have discussed in detail the indicator dilution method and uh, its use in the measurement of total body water and the uh, measurement of extracellular fluid volume. Now, we are going to use the same uh, thing for the measurement, the same indicator dilution method for the measurement of plasma volume and the measurement of interstitial fluid volume. Now, Basically, uh, we discussed that there is uh, there is around 42 liters of uh, fluid in the body, which is basically uh, distributed into plasma and the interstitial fluid, and, uh, both of which basically make the extracellular fluid. And then uh, there is the intracellular fluid. And uh, we basically measured the total body water uh, separately. Then we uh, and we use the indicator dilution method for that. We also discussed the measurement of the extracellular fluid uh, volume, and uh, we also used uh, the indicator dilution method again. This time again, uh, we will use the indica indicator dilution method for the measurement of plasma and interstitial fluid. But the only thing is that for the measurement of total body water, uh, the, the indicator which we used was the radioactive water, heavy water or antipyrin. For the measurement of the uh, extracellular fluid volume and intracellular fluid volume, we basically used the indicator uh, radioactive sodium, radioactive chloride, radioactive iothelamate or inulin. But in this case, in this case, we are going to use um, a radioactive iodine labeled albumin. We are going to use the radioactive iodine labeled albumin or the Evans blue or the Evans blue. Now these uh, two uh, indicators, they have the property to distribute only in the plasma. When they are injected into the body, they distribute only into the plasma. If we uh, revise and summarize, when we used radioactive water, heavy water or antipyrin, it distributed completely into the uh, total body water, into the extracellular fluid, into the intracellular fluid, in the plasma, in the interstitial fluid and into the intracellular fluid. So it, it was basically the property of the indicator, these indicators, the radioactive water, the heavy water and the antipyrin. Then when you, we uh, were measuring uh, the extracellular fluid, we used the radioactive sodium, radioactive chloride and those indicators had the property to distribute only into the extracellular fluid and they were not going into the intracellular fluid. So with the help of these indicators and with the help of uh, indicator dilution method, we could determine the extracellular fluid volume and intracellular fluid volume. Now we are using uh, this indicator, the radioactive iodine labeled albumin or the Evans blue or the Evans blue, whatever I cannot properly pronounce it. With these uh, indicators, uh, we can determine the plasma volume because this in, uh, these indicators, they will not cross the plasma. They cannot cross the plasma. Here, this indicator basically distributed into the plasma and into the interstitial fluid, but it uh, could only barely cross into this intracellular fluid. Now, this indicator is only distributed distributing into the plasma and it is not going to enter into the interstitial fluid. So you see, and this indicator is present only in the plasma. It is not entering. It is basically here, the red color shows the interstitial fluid. So this red color here, or I will mark it blue. These things are basically the indicator. This is basically the indicator which is basically present in the plasma only. So it is present only in the plasma. Now once it has distributed itself into the plasma, we will apply the same old principle. We will apply the same old principle because we uh, we discussed that the, the mass, the volume and the concentration of the indicator are known to us. So even in this case, the mass, volume, and concentration of this indicator are known to us and we know the concentration, the mass and the volume but before injecting it into the body, its mass is basically mass A, its volume is volume A and its concentration is concentration A. Once it has been injected into the body, it distributes so its volume and its concentration changes because it distributes over larger area, over larger area into the plasma. So its concentration changes, its volume changes but its mass remains the same, its mass remains the same. As we discussed that the indicator mass A is basically equal to indicator mass B, that is something which we discussed in the indicator dilution method in our previous lectures. And this is basically the law of conservation of mass. So here again we have the mass B, here we have the mass B which is basically the product of volume B into concentration B. Now before injecting it, its concentration and volume were labeled as A and after injecting its volume concentration are labeled as B and same goes for its mass but but due to but according to the law of conservation of mass its mass before injection and its mass after injection remains the same it will not change only its concentration and volume will change depending upon the uh, the the uh, the, um, uh, the fluid in which it is uh, being injected now to determine the volume of that fluid in which it is being injected for example the, we want to determine the volume of this plasma in which it is present here now this has become the volume B. We want to determine this volume B. So by shuffling the equation, volume B becomes mass B by concentration B. Now we will take a sample from here and we will basically calculate its concentration B. We knew its concentration. We knew the concentration before injecting. We knew its mass. We knew its volume before injecting. But after injecting it, its concentration changed. So we determine its concentration. And as far as the mass is concerned, the mass B, we know that mass A is equal to mass B 
according to law of conservation of mass its mass will not change its amount here remains the same only it distributes over a larger area so instead of mass b we can write this mass a and instead of mass a we can write the volume a in concentration a so volume b is basically volume a into concentration a by concentration b so this equation will be used is this equation was, was previously used we knew the indicator mass volume and concentration before injecting and we knew according to law of conservation of mass that mass before injecting will be equal to mass after injecting and then mass b was also the product of its volume and concentration by shuffling the equation we got the volume b is equal to mass by b as the mass b is equal to mass a so we write the mass a and mass a is basically the product of volume a and concentration a so we change this equation to volume a and concentration a otherwise this equation remains the same we are doing these uh, things just to calculate volume b we don't know the volume b otherwise we know these other things we can calculate the concentration but we cannot calculate the volume so to determine the volume uh, we shuffle the equation according to our ease now depending upon the volume in, and depending upon the indicator depending upon the volume and depending upon the indicator we can put the values in this equation we can put the values in this equation and if it has distributed in the whole of the body we will determine the total body water if it has distributed itself into the plasma and the interstitial fluid we can calculate the extracellular fluid volume by by removing the extracellular fluid from the total uh, body water we can also determine the intracellular fluid and if this indicator basically distribute itself into the plasma only then with the help of this equation we can determine the volume of plasma now once we have determined the uh, the volume of uh, plasma we can then calculate the uh, volume of interstitial fluid as well because we have calculated the volume of extracellular fluid here extracellular fluid here we cannot we cannot have an indicator we cannot have an indicator which can only go into the interstitial fluid we cannot have an indicator which should only go into the interstitial fluid and which cannot uh, well like in, an indicator which will not go into the plasma and which will not go into the intracellular fluid and which will only remain in the interstitial fluid such an indicator is not present so we calculate the interst interstitial fluid by we uh, by by basically we minus we minus the plasma volume from the extracellular fluid volume and we get the interstitial fluid volume so by when we minus the plasma volume from the plasma volume from the extracellular fluid volume which we have determined we get the in interstitial fluid volume so that's how we basically calculate the plasma volume and that's how we calculate the interstitial fluid volume now if there is any confusion uh, then you should watch all the previous three four lectures in which we have uh, discussed in detail the uh, indicator dilution method and in which we have discussed in detail how to basically determine the total body water how to determine the uh, extracellular fluid volume how to determine the intracellular fluid volume and then when you watch this uh, lecture it will be very easy for you because you will be able to understand this equation and uh, when you basically read it from the textbook then it will become very easy for you to understand it's very easy only you have to uh, read all or basically you have to watch all the lectures in a sequence so that's all about measurement of plasma volume and interstitial fluid volume thanks a lot for watching the video